Black, uh, Pete Kelly, and Wayne Lamberton. I'm Jeremy Hansen, Vice Chair, filling in for Brad Town. We also have uh, Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, is there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda? I have none. Okay, great. Any public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Okay, Treasurer's Report. Okay. Um, I'm going to be going to an asset management meeting. There's a workshop the state is putting on at the end of April, which is exciting to me because uh, it's for the water division. And um, it's going to give me insights on what to have for reserves, um, what to be looking for as far as maintenance items, and also the depreciation. I think the depreciation thing is something that I really need to delve into because our auditors have one thought, you know, there's many different thoughts out there. So if I can get something that is recommended by the state, I think it would be ideal. So I have one, uh, it's a two-part workshop. The first part is in April, and the second part is in June, so it's something I will be taking. You know, is that part of the rate setting? They will be talking about it. Because I think that would be very valuable. Right, you know, yeah. where, um, you know, do you go by usage, or do you just set a rate, and right. you know, stuff like that. So, so at some so, point. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of things, and there's, it's very limited. Uh, they can only have up to 10 people at a time, so I want to make mm. sure to get in early. So that, to me, is very, very helpful. Um, also, I have seven properties I've sent to the attorney for tax sale. Not, probably not all of them go to tax sale. A lot of times, when somebody gets a letter from the attorney, then they'll respond. Okay, but these people have not responded to the numerous times I've asked them to. So I've got those two, and I've got two others that I cannot locate the people. There's one where the house is abandoned, and I know that the uh, their mortgage company wants to uh, foreclose on it, but I've some, sent something to the for, you know to the mortgage company saying I can't find these people. I do plan on sending a tax sale, and I've talked to the town attorney, and he said you hand, you send that one to me first because we need to find a way to locate these people. And from what I understand, the couple divorced. I have no idea where they went. I can't find them. Then I have another one that's just land only. That's not that's up on Highland Avenue, and the person that owned it at one point I don't. I don't know what happened to him. He was elderly, I believe. I think he may have passed away. I can't find anything on him. I've really researched it. That's another one I've sent to the attorney because it's owned by a corporation. The corporation still exists, but this was something that went back to the 80s. So it's just one of those deals where it's better, I think, for us to spend the money and have the attorney do it the correct way. So I have seven that, that I'm sure of, um, but these other two, I'm not sure exactly when that will happen. But I just want to make you aware I am working on that. And that's all I've got for, for this part. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, forgiveness for balances under $5. Okay, so I can just pass these around. I have got seven of them, and for a total of $2.29. We do this every year, right? Yeah. Every quarter, just about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is something that we approved starting, what, last, not, not this year's town meeting, but town meeting 2017. Uh, actually, it was after the charter was approved. It was after the charter. Yeah, so okay, it was on so the really, charter. I think it was probably June last year. Or July yeah, okay, or great. Last yeah. Year. And I think last quarter was the first quarter you did. Probably, it yes. In December. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I must have missed it. Either that yeah. or the second. I'll move that we allow uh, forgiveness for the uh, balances due under $5. I'll move what was the total here. $2.29 for all of them. Total. Let me cover it. <laughs> I'll get it. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, none abstaining. Thank you. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Everybody a chance to look over those? <clears throat> I'll move that we approve general fund accounts payable warrant. 18G19 of the checks 17966 to 17995 in the amount of $39,384.14. Void check 17953 in the amount of 3561.30. And approve apparel warrant number 18 20 for payroll March 18th, 2018 to March 31st, 2018. In the amount of thirty-nine thousand five hundred and twenty-five dollars and fifty-eight cents. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. None abstaining. Motion passes. Okay. Appointment of town representative to Central Vermont Internet. We had gotten a letter. Um, I discussed this last time from Jeremy Hansen, the acting clerk of Central Vermont Internet, asking for a representative from the community to be appointed. 
as our representative. We advertised that. It was, yeah. And did we receive any? I did not. Well, I move that we elect Jeremy Hansen as our uh, board member. I second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Thank you very much, by the way. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed, none abstaining. Motion passes. Could I have a, a motion to authorize, and I guess I would ask Brad to sign this, would that be? Yep. Um, to have the chair sign on behalf of the, the board. The I'll move to authorize our chairman to sign this appointment. Second. Yeah. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed, none abstaining. Thank you very much. That passes. And we have uh, Robert Lamer, Green Lantern Group. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, I'm Robert Lamer from Berlin. Nice to see you again. Um, last time we were here, we uh, presented the overview of a net metering agreement um, on a specific uh, project. Uh, which ultimately uh, it, it's it's no longer available. So we needed to go back to the drawing board. Um, there is a very little difference between the original um, project and this project, except they fall into slightly different uh, regulatory regimes. Um, but the numbers uh, work out to be approximately the same, and the. Uh, heart of the proposal is that uh, the town would enter into an agreement uh, to buy from a specific project, uh, which is yet to be determined. We, uh, the company has an inventory of projects which are fundamentally identical. They're all 150 kilowatt projects. Uh, and that number 150 is is chosen essentially to comply with the current uh, rules of the Public Utilities Commission, which sort of optimizes um, the um, solar adders that are associated with projects of different sizes. So that, that became effective in 2017. And as a result of that, most of the projects that are being built in Vermont are uh, approximately two acres. Uh, the specific project that we're looking at here is in fact available and you know if, if, if nobody else grabs it then it'll be this one. If, if somebody else grabs it then it'll be another one just like it. Uh, but the numbers are reliable. Um, essentially what it, what it does is um, uh, take the net meter credits that are developed by uh, this array and credit them to uh, the accounts of the town of Berlin, uh, which are listed in the proposal. And specifically, there are a number of, of water pumps um, that, that would be uh, beneficiaries and receive a discounted uh, cost as a result of this proposal. Um, and there would be an agreement that in effect to buy at these credits against the town's bills uh, at a discount uh, for a period of 20 years. Uh, it's important to note that even though the um, solar adders that are associated with solar power in Vermont only last 10 years, the discount is for the entire period of time, a 20 year period uh, with optional renewals if we get out, you know, get out that far. Um, and essentially what it does is to create a 12% discount off of uh, paying your bill without this program. And when I say your bill, um, the, the regulation uh, focuses exclusively on energy charges and excludes things like service fees and efficiency charges and things like that. It's just in the statute, in the statute and that's can't do anything about that. Um, we have also carved out of the deal um, a factor of 15% of, of the town's current energy consumption, 
um, the town's energy consumption could drop by 15% and um, the deal would be uh, completely unchanged. Um, <coughs> if the town's consumption were to drop lower than that, what happens is going to be a function of what electricity prices are at the time that that happens. Because we can expect in all probability that electricity prices are going to continue to rise and that it'll take more net meter credits to pay the same amount of consumption simply because each kilowatt hour costs more. Um, that's a, a very frequent comment is, is uh, sometimes folks are concerned that they're going to end up with what's known as stranded credits. Stranded credits are uh, uh, net meter credits that are older than 12 months old. They expire without value. Um, but just the natural progression of prices, and we have a historic uh, inflation of between 2 and 3 percent. We use 2 percent in, in, our, in our calculations. Um, will require that bill basically to require uh, the uh, net meter credits even if your consumption uh, drops further than that 15% corridor. I, I realize that that's a complicated thought. Hopefully you, you can visualize what I'm talking about. 20 years from now, a kilowatt hour isn't going to cost what it costs today. It will cost more and therefore it will require more net meter credits to pay the same bill. Um, and essentially, uh, the way this is set up um, results in a, in a uh, savings to the town without any investment, responsibility for, for any physical property, maintenance, uh, liability. Uh, the, all, all that happens essentially is that uh, the array produces power. That power is recorded and reported to Green Mountain Power and uh, is... Um, offsets your bill uh, without any intervention. That's all automatic uh, from this time forward. Uh, and the project owner will invoice uh, the town uh, for 88% um, of the value of those $1 credits. That's the guaranteed 12% discount. You pay the project owner 12, uh, 88 cents on the dollar. Green Mountain Power credits you a dollar. Got it. So my <clears throat> question is, you've got a 10-year power purchase agreement. It's a 20, 20, 20 year. Your power purchase agreement with Green Mountain Power. We don't have a power purchase agreement with, well, we have, um, not, not really, uh, Wayne. Um, because, for example, uh, in, in some circumstances, there's a negative solar adder, which continues long before, after the, the 10 years. So it's, it, it, it's not restricted to 10 years, Okay. technically. <clears throat> so the, we're getting 88% of 19 cents? 18.84. Uh, yeah. So we're getting 88% of 19 cents, let's call it. If in year 11, the adder goes away mm -hmm. and your credits then are let's just call it 14 cents mm -hmm. and we're getting 88 percent of 14 cents mm -hmm. our our investment or our credits are going to be less than they are in the first 10 years your credits your credits will be, well, in, this, in the um, exhibit which I, I sent, uh, it shows the development of the rate. So just, just to take you through that, it's 14.919 14 cents in, in uh, 2018. And that's basically, that's, that's a fictitious rate that exists for no other purpose other than determining the value of a net meter credit. It's not what you're paying. It's not intended to be. It's just simply in, uh, a statutory number for determining the value of that credit. Uh, the adder is uh, one cent for the fact that we're doing this on, uh, on disturbed land. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old landfill. Um, and uh, three cents for 
actually the the, um, the uh, it says Rex here. It's really environmental attributes that are defined under under the law. But the Rex themselves are retired. They are returned to Green Mountain Power, and they they have no further value. Uh, they're retired with without any compensation. They just mm -hmm. go away. Uh, that four cents continues for ten years. Okay, after that point in time, yes, the net meet, the um, value of a net meter credit will be reduced by that four cents. However, the the twelve percent you, you will you will still get the fourteen cents, and you will get the fourteen cents for a twelve percent discount. Correct. So the discount the discount remains twelve percent. No more than likely of a greater number. Yes. <clears throat> so if it's 12% of 112% of 200, there's still 12%, but it's right. a different number. So you're going to get a 12% discount mm -hmm. on 14 cents instead of 19 cents. Yeah. Which means if you're... Right, but also it sounds like our net metering credit stays the same even though our, our cost of electricity can go up yes. over, over the years. I'm just wondering why that doesn't... So, but no, because we're going to get, we're going to pay 88% of 19 cents in the first 10 years. Yes. Let's just call it 10 years mm -hmm. and say that's the way it is. Right. We're going to pay 88% of 19 cents for the first 10 years. Right. Then the 4 cents goes away, and we're going to pay 88% Fourteen point, whatever cents. Yes, one 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 technical detail is that the fourteen point one nineteen cents can go up by decree of the state. Correct. Yeah, so it, it, it would probably. I mean, ten years from now, it's not going to be fourteen nine. It's going to be some higher number. You would hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so but we this, don't know what that is. Right. This is this is my position. There, there, there's a discontinuity. I understand the discontinuity. So. My position is, I built a 500 kilowatt solar field, and I'm purchasing all the power myself mm -hmm. for my businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to take the gamble on year 11 through 20 because it's my business and mm -hmm. my money. Right. And, and if, if they say it after 10 years that they're gonna pay eight cents, mm -hmm. well, then I guess I didn't make such a good deal. But it's my money. Yeah. When we're talking about the taxpayer's money in 20 years, mm -hmm. then I have a hard time with the with the unknown mm -hmm. from years 11 through 20. Mm -hmm. That's why I have the questions. That yeah. I have. Well, I, w one would think that over the first 10 years that, they, I mean, you would have built up, a, a, you know, 3,000 times 10, you would have built up a $30,000 profit simply by entering into the deal. So you've got that. Yeah. So the odds, the odds of showing a loss on it um, are severely diminished by what happened in the first 10 years. Um, and I mean, the, as you know, as an investor in solar plans, everything good happens in the first several years. Right. And thereafter, basically, we've, we are uh, reliant on economic factors that cannot be predicted. Uh, I mean, it's possible to, um, I mean, there will always be a discount off of the rate that would be paid by any other customer not involved in this agreement. And that's a very important point. If you didn't have it, you would definitely pay more than if you had it because you got that 12% discount that they don't get. Mm -hmm. So what do we have for backups of some catastrophe? I mean, in, you know, in 20 years or excuse me, 10 years or 11 years, the state is everybody's on solar or whatever. Is mm -hmm. there some sort of wonder if the, they get smashed or wrecked or the hail or a hurricane or whatever? Well, is that's an important an important yeah. point. Uh, the uh, unit the entire array is insured. Uh, it is the interests of the town as off taker are completely aligned with the interests of the project owner because he don't get paid unless he produces power. But I'm actually just thinking about where are we? Are we without power for? No, no because no. you are connected to Green Mountain Power's grid <coughs> at, so at all times. You're just paying all. You're paying all your money to Green Mountain Power instead of paying part of it to Green Mountain Power. Okay. Part of it. All right. 
<clears throat> yeah, uh, but that's that's the state energy plan basically is to have uh, distributed power generators with some type of storage system, and that's where they're headed. Mm -hmm. Um, so with, with sort of micro grids so that if, if one area of the state or, you know, the megalopolis to the south the gets direct. hit, uh, our, we could recover quicker because we have these local generators and local storage facilities. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Why would, why would this be better than doing something like a, um, like a local net metering thing where we're putting it on our own structures here? That can be done, and in some circumstances it is done. Uh, however, I mean, you know, I got, I've, got, I've got panels on my roof, and I thought I was facing due south, and it turns out I'm like a few degrees off, and instead of getting, you know, 5.1 kilowatts a year, I'm getting like 4.8, just because I'm not facing the equator. Mm -hmm. Here, I mean, I don't know what direction is south here, but if you're off a couple degrees or if they're covered with snow, um, you know, you're not going to get the power that you will with panels that are, that are precisely placed uh, and free of shading. Um, also, you, you uh, eliminate the hassle that would be associated with leaks in your roof and having to re replace the panels, uh, you know, remove the panels to replace a leak. Um, here, you've got no physical encumbrances. That, that's all been, you don't have to worry about it. You just pay the bill. So two cents a kilowatt is what we're talking about is our discount, approximately. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a difference between, um, I mean, with, with all of the adders, it's 1892, and uh, with the 12% um, discount, it's 1665, you're getting. Right. You're getting uh, as a credit. So the thirty thousand dollars over ten years, three thousand dollars a year at two cents a kilowatt. That's based on what demand and what meters. That is based on um, shed road. The um, that's that's the general high. That's the the highway shed. Uh, the Partridge Farms pump. The Barry Montpelier main pump the Dodge Farm pump, and the Shaw's pump. There's one meter that I excluded simply because it was so small, it's just not worth the administrative hassle. Um, also, I believe there were some street lights. What portion of that is the Shaw's pump? The Shaw's pump of, of 207,000 um, kilowatt hours, the Shaw's pump is uh, almost 52, so about a, about a quarter. So the town has a contract in place with an engineering firm to design a gravity line to eliminate the Shaw's pump station. Mm -hmm. That's just important information. That is very important information. It should factor into the agreement. Because that's 25% of the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there there, there, that, there that goes... Barry Montpelier Road, won't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, once... once I, I, I suggest... That, you know, you vote on the concept. Uh, if you like the concept, let's fine tune it. You know, uh, make adjustments for reality, uh, so that everybody's happy. But I mean, you've done all that work. No, nah, don't worry some, about it. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. point is that all that's going to change. I know that. So why don't we let it change and then decide? Well, uh, okay, then then <laughs> then provide to me I mean, what I, you think. Uh, but with it. My estimate is within 18 months, the Shaw's pump station goes away. Goes away? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so we remove that. We're down to 150. A little, a little more than 150. Uh, I don't think I actually got the, um, the, the description of what the, uh, the rubber meets the road. I got it uh, last time we met. Oh, so this is back in January. Yeah. Here <coughs> is... Yeah, I didn't send this again. So here's a copy. Yeah. Thank you. And also this goes that, with that, it. That one I have. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't have I don't this one. Okay, but. fine. And um, given a moment, I can do some calculations. And, and, and I mean, it's going to be... Um, well, let's see. If we go from <coughs> 207, 071... 
Um, 51, 991 minus, it's 155,080. 155,080. And store that. And we've got 207,071. Enter recall. It's 20, 25% almost on the nose. Right. Okay, so if we just take take that and apply it to the $3,017, that's what it's we're getting It's $2,500 a year. Right. Yeah. Which is fine. Saving it because we're getting 19 cents and we're getting and we're paying 88 percent 19 mm -hmm. cents. That's why we're saving it. Yes. It's just so you so we'll save 20 something thousand dollars over the first 10 years and we're gambling on the second 10. Years. I don't see how you're gambling. Well, what if the utility companies have a flood of cheap power? Mm -hmm. And at the end of 10 years, they say, we're going to pay you $0.08. Cents. Um, pay us $0.08. Cents. A kilowatt. They're not paying us anything. Okay, let's say that they'll buy your power for $0.08. Cents. Well, that would mean uh, retroactively changing a contract which is legally binding. Not and, after and, 10 years, right? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a... Do you have a 10-year power purchase agreement, or do you have a 20-year? What I'm saying is that under under Puck 5100, mm -hmm. let's assume you have a negative solar adder because you were bad and you uh, you built it on something scenic or uh, built it over 500K. That is forever. Uh, and that tells me that this agreement lasts far longer than, I mean, it, it is. there's no 10-year expiry on these agreements. So, in your opinion, the 10 years is only on the adder? Yeah. It's specific to the adder, and I can, I can send you a copy of the Puck 5100, you can take a look. Um, but it breaks it out uh, item by item. So what you're saying is, in your opinion, the, the worst thing that could happen is you get the billing rate. Less 12%. No, but I'm saying, I'm thinking as the, the developer. Yeah. The worst case is you're going to get paid the yeah. going rate right. for electricity. Right. Well, you'd be paying, you'd be paying, getting the going rate inflated for ten years on equipment that you bought ten years prior and, and depreciated. And yeah, one and a half percent degradation and so on. So yeah, no, you, but I mean, you know, you know how it works. I do. It's just easier for me to gamble with my own money than this. The time. I don't see a gamble here. I mean, in, um, you're always going to end up better under this than you will without it simply because of the, the discount. The 12%. The 12%. Now, I'm not saying it's a whole heck of a lot of money. On the other hand, it's a good idea. And it's a nice thing for the town to do. There's, there's some like soft reasons why you should be doing this. I won't get into them, but there are some nice reasons why you should be doing this. I agree. That's why I did it myself. Yes, I know. <laughs> It is funny working with town money as opposed to your own. It is. It's so easy to swing yeah. the bat with your own, but then when suddenly the phone yeah. starts ringing and why this? Well, why yeah, you have to be able to defend it, and it's it's defending something that is complex, mm. admittedly complex, um, but just the same. I mean, I, I just went through this with uh, another customer. You know, uh, his thing was, well, what if the price of electricity collapses completely? I don't know what could possibly do that. I mean, it's not like we're going to all have fuel cells in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if we did have fuel cells, how do those fuel cells get there? Did we buy them? Did we finance them? Uh, you know, it's just, there's too many holes in that. Right. And you know, anything that is, it could possibly drive the cost of electricity will be system-wide for Green Mountain Power, and you've always got a discount.
So love the idea of building solar. I'm going to put that out there right away. Um, the accounting and how this works out um, is complex. Um, it's too complex for me to fully understand right now. This is, a, this is the first time that, that I've seen this. Mm -hmm. I need more time before I'm able to say anything one way or the other. I, I, I could not vote yes on this right now. Yeah, I, and I can explain further why doing this deal compared to building it ourselves makes sense. Okay. Well, just just point point to fact. If you wanted to do the same deal by yourself, the cost of doing that is two hundred ninety five thousand dollars. That's what it would cost to build this system. Right. But I don't think that's what you're talking. That's that, that's not what yeah. I'm meaning. So I'm some somebody like uh, Sun Common, who I have I'm slightly more familiar with the way that they have it organized, where they will absorb the costs of the construction, and then that essentially gets spread out over the bills over the course of Well, I'm years. a Sun Common customer too. Mm -hmm. And let me let me explain to you about, about about what I think you've just described. I have a system on my house uh, which was built by Sun Common. God bless them. I love them. They're, they're great people, but it's a retail operation. Mm -hmm. It's it's not right. and if we we have there's there's a piece of paper in here that shows some of our customers that I would urge you to take a look at. Uh, uh, but uh, what they've got is a, uh, a credit with uh, Vermont Employee State Credit Union, mm -hmm. which I have that loan, mm -hmm. and it's a tax anticipation loan. And it basically will advance. It, it, it's, it's a deal that amortizes over 12 years with a 20-year with a amortization schedule. Uh, and it depends on you giving them back the 30% tax credit that you get to keep a level payment. I have that loan. It's a wonderful loan. It has no relationship to this. And it's it's hardly they'll it's they're they're, they're not they can't they can't finance this. Right. But I understand the accounting of that. I mm -hmm. understand how they move the pieces around okay. and how well, that's funded. Then I well, still do not understand. Well it but this is the first time you've seen it? Okay. So why don't we spend a couple of minutes and I'll take you through it. Okay. I, I I'm this is not something that, that I'm going to absorb in a public meeting. I'm, I'm a scientist. I need time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit with this data, and I need to chew on this myself. Okay. Well, if it's okay with you, perhaps we should meet over a cup of coffee. Yeah, and that's And, um, you know, I'll take you through it so that you do feel comfortable with it. Um, but this is, this is um, there is one handout which I want to make sure that you receive, uh, and that is, you know, what is net metering, and why do we do this? And we do this because the town, like so many uh, universities, hospitals, uh, and other not-for-profits, has no tax bracket. And the incentives that make solar possible in the United States are all tax-driven. And therefore, you need a partner that has a tax appetite. And what we do, and Sun Common does not do this, is to connect financing to these projects so that they can actually be built. Uh, without that, the town would need to resort, well, first of all, it, it, the project would never break even in a zero tax bracket. If you went to VITA and financed this, it will never break even. Um, and that's just the reality of the situation. So the town would need to go get grants. Um, and, you know, getting a, getting a grant for this amount of money could take a very significant amount of time. And you're still at a point where you could still do business with us because we do these things soup to nuts for, we do them anyway, right? So you're still, you still need to go find somebody who's capable of locating a site for you, doing the, the uh, site work on that, making sure that there's no toxic waste or other things that are associated with it, uh, designing it, uh, sourcing all the materials, getting the permits for it, uh, making the interconnections, and then maintaining it. Mm. Uh, you know, I realize that, that 200 bucks a month is not a whole lot of money, but it's the only way I think the town will ever get solar. I think that's just the reality of the situation. Okay, so, um, I, like I said, I'm going to need more time to yeah. chew on this. I so agree. unless you guys need, unless you guys have something else. 
Like you said, when you came in, there's no rush on this one. The, the deal was well. I, the the only rush, and I I'm I'm hesitant to tell you, um, but already we're booked into November. Um, so so and 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 well, I, I mean, if he's not comfortable, well, he, well he's, it's not that he's not comfortable. He he just well, hasn't had an opportunity to digest that. We'll have another meeting, mm -hmm. and we can discuss it. Okay, uh, Jeremy, you, you were just elected to. The select no, board? No, no. I've been on the select board for a while. Okay, and have you not, uh, you've not seen this material? It could have been in a packet in a, in a meeting that I, I reviewed and I was just not physically. Yeah, I probably should have sent it to you this last time, so I okay. apologize. For that. Yeah. But it's, it's the same material you gave a few it's weeks ago. Essentially, right? yeah. Um, when you yes, came yes, before. it's the same, okay. same as, as, as came before. Back my previous yeah, okay. we, we, we should keep in it. mind that this is a, a function of interest rates. Mm -hmm which are generally in a rising mode, uh, and that the deal uh, will not improve if interest rates go up. Uh, we should also keep in mind that uh, President Trump has declared a uh, pretty significant tariff on uh, imported solar panels, uh, which won't take effect for uh, a while. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, there are things that could make, that this, make this all Can I just go away. Can you right. sure. um, yeah. Did you have one? Did you need one? Oh. I have a one. Oh, okay. Wayne, are you comfortable that 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 the that there's really not a whole lot of way to get burned here? What I was going to explain, and what I said when I when I said that I could explain why this was logical as opposed to the town putting in panels, was yeah. exactly that the tax the tax yeah. rate, because the tax incentives are what make this flow. Right. It's the only way, way it makes it possible. Okay. Basically, the depreciation is going to somebody else. They're lending the money. And, and accepting right. all the risks. That makes, that makes sense. Right. That starts to put the pieces together. Yeah, and but, but, but I, mean, I, I wouldn't rush into things about a parent or about a president, or I would never do that myself. And Brad's not here, and Angelina's not here. Okay. And Sorry. Well, I, 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 I certainly don't want to rush you. I want you to be happy. Right. Um, and the thing is, we're sitting here listening to you. Yeah. You ought to hear me out in the parking lot try to explain this to somebody else in half an hour. Okay. I'll be like, yeah. Call Wayne. Well, <laughs> in my suggestion, uh, Pete, is, you know, it's, it's kind of like understanding how a car runs. Um, the credits go on your bill, you pay the owner of the system part, you pay Green Mountain the, the part, and at the end of the day, you end up with a discount. That's it. Uh, the rest, the rest is all in contracts, and you, you've got, you got Rob to review the contract. Um, but you, you don't need to know the order of the firing of the spark plugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, that, that's a dangerous, right, right, yeah. a dangerous place to go. Right. That's the place where I like to go. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific. The but well, then let's meet, huh? Yeah. Let's let's meet. What's what's your availability this week? Not this week. It'll have to be some other time. I have, I have my kids this week, and I have. To okay. Can I get your car? <laughs> you say you're a scientist. I am. What type of scientist are you? Computer scientist. Uh -huh. I deal with data. Great. When would you like me to reschedule yeah, this? Um, any idea? It'd be nice that everybody is here. Yeah. We'll assume that everyone will be here at the Next meeting we can reschedule it. For. I, yeah, I mean, I will be here at the meeting on the 16th. I mean, that's soon enough. I should be able to. I will not be here. here. Yeah. No. Okay. Be traveling. Or when I put it in for that. And yeah. Yeah. If there's any issues for okay. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I don't really, you know, if, if uh, Jeremy takes some time and reviews the materials and uh, perhaps meets with me or, or, or contacts me with, with any specific questions, you don't need me here on the road. Right. Well, if we had questions, we could find you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll be in Florida, but I'm reachable. Right. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Anything thank else? You. Nice thank to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we have approval of select board minutes for uh, March 19th, 2018. <clears throat> that was a long... Yeah, from all those presentations. Okay. I have a couple of just um, spelling okay. corrections. Sure. If we go down to appointments to boards... Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. Appointments to boards, page uh, 3... Under two-year terms, that's the second, uh, the yep. second one there. This is yep. Beth Doubt, D A U T. Thank you. Um, over at the, in the same line, Phil Gentile, G N T I L E. Okay. Um, down in the <coughs> three-year terms, in the second line, you have uh, Alan oh, Sulik. It should Alan. be Ellen E L L E N Sulik S U L E K. And I think that's all I have. Um, on page four, approval of previous meeting minutes. The last, uh, we had two meetings. Uh, Hanson moved to approve the minutes for the Monday, March 5th. Free town meeting select board meeting <coughs> seconded by Lamberton. Passed 4 0. Select board member Capron abstained. So it says passed unanimously, unanimously, but it should be 4 0 and right. Angelina abstained. Okay. I think she did say I. Right. She, the, yes. You know. Okay, great. Thank you. I can't believe it. With those corrections, I'll move that we approve the meeting minutes of March 19th. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Motion passes. Town Administrator Report. I have a few things, not too much. I did send copies for informational purposes of the EMS reports. I got two months, of January and February, um, which you should have gotten. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe there was a follow-up, an email that I received from Laura Stone regarding um, the 302 bridge um, that I enclosed. Um, I wanted to make the board aware um, that the Public Works Board did receive a engineering, preliminary engineering report regarding the development of the fourth well. Hmm. And um, roughly at the moment, there are a couple of alternatives, but roughly to get the well online, there's a couple of options that are shown, but I believe it was $400,000 roughly for the lower price alternative, which is to have the well located in such a spot that we can use our existing uh, storage, our pump okay. storage, yeah. that area. So that is something that the Public Works Board will be wrestling with, but I wanted the board to be aware of that because at some point there's going to be a financing if, the, if we decide to go forward with that at this time. Do, do they know what that well will produce? I mean, is it the same um, hour probably? You know, I have not read this yet, and so I don't know the answer to that, but I, I can find out. I have a copy of that, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> right. Well, Tom, Tom and I talked about this, and he said that the Public Works Board had received this, and I'm just kind of giving the board a heads up that things are happening with that. Um, Tom has also given me a tentative schedule for the town plan approval process, um, which the board will be involved by having a couple of public hearings regarding that. And tentatively, the board public hearings on the town plan approval would be in June, and last meeting in June, first meeting in July. Um, they're hoping that it would be ready to be voted on August 14th. So that is in the, that is in the works. Is that, is that the primary election? Or is that a... I believe that is the... I, I always get these confused. It is not the general election. It's the primary, the primary. for, for uh, state okay. offices and yeah. things like that. Um, and finally, um, the... Um, the League of Cities and Towns, we had a representative come in today to kind of go through our offices to give us some ergonomic suggestions. Um, 
as is no surprise, everybody's chair is wrong. Everyone's ergonomics is wrong. In fact, I, I came out the best. I was very proud to, to tell you that. Um, and I'm going to be talking to the staff about it, but we will be coming to the board at some point when we know what it is that might make sense for us to do. Um, again, it's, it's nothing that's going to bankrupt the town, but I think it's important for the town to consider it. Saving workers comp claims anyway. Right, sure. Um, $35,000 table, maybe? Um, no, I'll do the $31,000. Um, I think that'll be good. Can I have your old chair? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, that's what we've been doing um, this week. Great. Uh, round table. All set. Also, all set. Do we have executive session? We do not. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.